Want to know which two markets are going to grow the most over the next five years? What about if that prediction came from some of the top economists in the country? Well, I've just attended the BIS Oxford Economics Business Forecasting Conference, and I wanted to share with you their prediction for the top two cities in Australia for growth over the next few years. But first, let me introduce myself. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the founder of Infinite Wealth, and welcome to our Just Ask Tim video series, where you can get all your questions answered on anything finance, real estate, investment related, and more. Now please like, comment, and share this video, and if it's your first time tuning in, welcome along, and thank Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Now before we get into the individual markets, let me give you an overview of the global and Australian economic outlook. Now many people realise the world economy is slowing, particularly considering that Australia's own Reserve Bank has been taking action to stimulate the economy by cutting interest rates. Now what most people don't realise is that the slowing is entirely expected, and this is particularly due to the fiscal stimulus like the tax cuts that have been occurring in the US and are now coming to an end. Globally, the biggest headwind being faced is the US-China trade war, with new meetings scheduled next week between the two economic juggernauts. Now, it's hard to predict how these talks will go, with 63% of Americans now believing Trump's tariffs are bad for the economy. However, Trump's ability to spin and misdirect leaves anyone guessing his approach. Regardless, both the US Fed and Chinese authorities still have stimulus up their sleeve with the Fed expected to cut interest rates up to four times over the coming year. Coming year. Now, Brexit still remains a concern for many. However, the economic impacts are likely to remain isolated to the UK. In terms of the Australian economic outlook, we continue to see imbalance growth driven by exports and government spending with the persistent headwinds of consumer spending and the housing sector. There was a modest pickup in growth momentum to July driven by the election result, tax cuts, completion of the Banking Royal Commission and the removal of restrictions by APRA from 2015 and 17 and their changes to the assessment rate. Furthermore, the current account has moved into surplus for the first time in 44 years and business investment has been flat of late, but capacity utilisation is relatively high and demand for business credit has held up. Although confidence is subdued, non-residential construction is set to return to growth and mining investment is now rising again. Machinery and equipment and intellectual property investment is also expected to rebound. The housing sector investment still has further to fall, but this is largely in Sydney and Melbourne phenomena with significant falls experienced recently, but conditions appear to be stabilising. So nationally, commencements are expected to bottom at 153,000, which is the lowest since 2011-12. Now, over the last four years, averaging around 226,000 commencements with underlying demand approximately at 200,000, hence we're seeing the correction in the markets now. Jobs growth has been solid, but, looking for, but forward-looking indicators are softening, and unfortunately, labour demand has been met by increased supply, causing changes to the structure of the labour market. So the unemployment rate has remained steady and wages growth tepid. Now, the RBA have become concerned about inflation expectations and have reassessed the spare capacity in the economy, with the cash rates, cuts materialising, and more to come with space for further fiscal expansion. Now, BIS Oxford uh, outlook remains cautiously optimistic, particularly while weak income growth persists with the anticipation of another rate cut between now and February. Nationally, the downside risks to the economy are building quality concerns, weaker population growth and labour market conditions. On the upside, the additional work that will be required for the alterations and additions sector, some of which is being provided by the downside risk, is the building quality concerns. Now, the largest upside factor is the degree of additional government stimulus that can either be provided or brought forward to support the economy. Tax revenue has spiked due to an increase in compliant returns and tax cuts legislated for the 1st of July 1922 and 24 and can be brought forward. So overall, we'll get a soft landing and it's very unlikely that Australia will move into recession without being dri driven by some kind of global shock. But now let's focus on the individual markets and let me directly quote Robert Moller, the Executive Chairman for BIS Oxford Economics. Western Australia and Queensland will be the best performing markets over the next five years, end quote. So we've talked about Queensland forecasts in previous videos, so I'm gonna focus on WA as that was central to this particular conference. So population growth in WA is troughed and is forecast to spike with employment growth also expected to recover. Net overseas migration is rising and net interstate migration had its lowest decline since December 2014. The unemployment rate has been steady as has the participation rate. 
Also, the drag from business investment is waning and mining investment will pick up from here. Now, there's still excess stock in the market. However, this has been declining significantly over recent years. The vacancy just run indicator has decreased from above 7% to around 3% and is indicative of this combined with lower commencements and significant pent up demand from upgraders previously unable to secure finance. Underlying, underlying demand is expected to rise to 22,500 new dwellings a year for the next five years with the main drivers being increased business investment with more projects in the pipeline, over uh, lower unemployment with 10,000 jobs expected to be required over the next five years, and better wage growth. Overall, Mola is predicting 6% per annum median house price growth as an average for the next three years. So guys, that's it from me. Now remember to like, comment, share this video, and don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Also, if you want to submit a question or as a topic you'd like me to discuss in more detail for our Just Ask Tim video series, there is a link in the post. Now stay tuned later in the week for The Why, The Week in Real Estate, where you can get all the top stories happening this week in finance, real estate, and investment. Have a great week, guys, and remember, there is only one thing in life that makes a difference. Action. Thanks, guys. See ya.